And now it's, you know, and I wrote, you know, it's one of the things about the difference between the guys now being unhappy with economic situations that the guys from like my childhood, the idea that you, you know, don't have to wrestle five nights a week (laughs) and and you can make a hundred thousand dollars or five hundred thousand dollars a year doing like minimal matches. I mean, they're hard matches. Don't get me wrong. And these guys are taking incredible punishment. I'm not saying that they, you know, like some old timer, Oh, you guys got it easy. You got it. It's different. But the idea that, you know, like um, I'm not on TV every week, I'm sad, but I'm making all kinds of money. Those guys in the other generation would be like free money, yeah, (laughs) free money. I'm not even working for it. This is even better than wrestling, you know? So it's like, it's like, but it's, but this generation is all about, they want to have these great matches. And, and for us as fans, you know, I think that we should be appreciative of that. Other than the fact that we are so spoiled by great matches, the people are, you know, we see this stuff that is so incredible and people are like, oh, you know, it's just like it's Wednesday night dynamite. You know what well, I mean? I mean, I, as a, as a longtime fan, I very much appreciate the, the matches that we get to see, but there is a small part of me that is also worried about the injury rate and about, Oh, I am too. Like that, 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 that's really sometimes when I watch it, I go, Oh man, this is great. But I almost feel guilty watching it sometimes. Oh, we talk about Will Ospreay's week. So I, I, I you know, I'm watching the Will Ospreay match with, with um, Ricky Knight Jr. Yeah. And it's, 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 you know, he didn't do anything really stupid in that match at all. As far as like injury stuff or landing on his head or anything like that. Um, but he worked so hard and he took big bumps and he did a lot of really incredible athletic stuff. And I'm going like, it's like, you know, like almost when, when Omega was going, when when Omega was sort of knocking him, it's like, he did it on an indie show. You know what I mean? And it's like, but for him, you know, revolution pro was this company that stuck by him and that helped build him. You know, like, I mean, rev pro was the company where when Okada came in, they put him against Okada. Then Okada saw, you know, had that match with him and just goes, we need to bring this guy to Japan. And Okada became like his big brother. And that played into the storyline of, you know, when Will Ospreay turned on Okada and where we are now as well. Um, but so he has, you know, and, and, and the, you know, during the pandemic, Will worked for them. He was very loyal to them. Um, and um, they were and they, they were loyal to him when people were giving them crap for booking Will because the during that period where people wanted Will blacklisted out of wrestling, um, you know, and they didn't, you know, and they took a lot of heat for for that too. So they both took heat, you know, they both have done a lot. So there's a lo- there's a loyalty there. The um, so he was going to go out there and make this match, this passing of the torch match into something absolutely incredible, but it's like you wrestled juice and you wrestled Naito and you had wrestled Okada. And then you're doing the six man on dynamite. And it's like, if you, you don't have to go 30, you know, I'm thinking like this match is phenomenal. And, and, you know, in, in some ways, I think that there's people who will watch this match. If you're into like a match with, with just heat and telling a story, even though there's there are a lot of big moves, but it's not this match was not about big moves. It was not about showing off or whatever you want to say. This was this was as old school with with new moves as old school could be. But they took he still took brutal punishment night after night this week. And it's like, yeah, I'm watching this like there's a part of me going like, OK, this is one of the greatest weeks I've ever seen any wrestler ever have. But my God, you know, it's like. Like take a break, and he is taking a break. You know what I mean? He is he is lessening his schedule, and he does know it. But um, yeah, you know, it was like, yeah, I mean, for all of these guys, I mean, I absolutely the injury rate is really high. I mean, it's like, you know, the style that Ric Flair did, where he could do it seven nights a week, mm-hmm. um, and have great matches. But those matches, you know, but by, by today's standards, I mean, you know they wouldn't stand out like they did then because like then we didn't have matches like that. So um, hardly ever, you know, now it's like all these guys want to do those matches up and down the card. Um, So it's great to go to a live card like that. But yes, the, um, the risks that these guys take in, in elevating that game um, in some cases, I, I, I worry about it with everyone, but we also have to acknowledge that like the NFL and yeah. and and a lot of these sports that that part of the sport is you are going to get hurt 
and there is a certain you know, MMA, you know, like in all of these cases, you are going to get hurt. So the idea that they are hurting themselves, it's like what, you know, what allows for longevity. And I guess the thing that, you know, I, you know, with Brian Danielson, when he was on the show, we, we talked about it, you know, mm-hmm. with, with Nagata and with Suzuki. And it's like, you know, I watch that kind of slapping in the face and the hard chops and everything like that. And it's like, oh man, they're hitting each other so hard and it hurts and whatever. And it's like, but guess what? You know, Suzuki and Nagata are in their fifties and they can still do it. Mm-hmm. And it's like, God damn, if I saw people when I was younger in their fifties who could perform at that level, I never did. So maybe all those super high back body drops and stuff that they did in the seventies, that's supposed to be safe. You know, those guys ended up, you know, a lot of those guys had horrible backs and knees, you know, and, and guys now have bad, have bad knees, too. Um, and in cases, bad backs, too. But, you know, and a lot more bad. I think we have more bad shoulders now from from the nature of the different bumps. But there's always going to be injuries. But, yeah, you want the thing to be as, as entertaining as possible while being relatively safe. And Osprey is wrestling safer than when he was younger and doing all the crazy stuff. But man, is he putting himself through the ringer in a week like this? It's like, wow, you know, it's like there's there's a double edged sword to like this was an incredible week. But yeah, when I watched the RKJ match, it was like, God, he is working so hard, you know, and it's not the G1. And it's just like, man, this is like days after the G1, <laughs> you know, that match with Okada and he's doing it again, you yeah. know, you know, and and so. Um, and then on Wednesday, I thought, okay, it's a six man tag and he can, you know, Ozzy opens really good and he can pick his spots and he can still get over. No, he was out there carrying the entire match, trying to go out there and be the best wrestler in the world again. So it's just like, wow, you know, um, but yeah, it's a double edged sword. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.